while I was working on the Brushy Mountain video, I realized I hadn't reviewed my latest Man Lake order that I mentioned in one video. So, recently when I got back into this area in South Carolina, I put together a another order for some parts that I'd seen that were kind of, I don't want to say it, um, specialty items, but still something you need to have in your pocket when you've gone to a hive and you want to catch a queen. So I didn't have any of these queen catchers, but so I ordered, I'd, I'd seen them, but I'd seen them, uh, used, so I ordered some, and, uh, these are the plastic ones from Man Lake. Uh, they were having a sale, so I figured, what the hey, I'll pick them up. So I also, uh, I don't know if you can see it, I etched an initial into these so that I'll know they're mine. And they're your basic queen catcher um, with the grid on the bottom, a little, a little kind of grid, I don't know, the grid on the sides, the, the little gap on the bottom so that there's plenty of places for the tending bees to, to go into. And then I did, for fun, pick up a uh, stainless steel one just to have one that was a little more durable. And this is, this is fairly, fairly durable. Feels good. Feels pretty good. And I also picked up a tiny, tiny hive tool. It just looked cute. It's a J-hook hive tool. And uh, it's machined. And again, I etched my name into it. <laughs> my initial, my initial, <laughs> not my name. And uh, that was the, the latest stuff that I didn't buy on the first round with Man Lake. On the first round with Man Lake, I picked up a very basic smoker. And it has now been used a few times. I, uh, a lot of people have these, so I stuck my address on it, which is no longer my address. So, and I stuck a sticker I got at, uh, this sticker's hanging on a little bit better. No longer my address. So, it at least identifies it, because when you're faced with five of these sitting next to each other at a beginning bee yard meeting, uh, everybody starts asking which one is yours. So, <laughs> I've had that experience, and I tried drawing on it. I tried drawing a dragon on it, but uh, first time I tried to clean it up with some uh, alcohol to get some of the propolis off, it smudged my artwork. So, there used to be a dragon on it. So I have resorted to, amazingly, this, this cheap little sticker I got at Dragon Con from the uh, Solar Observatory people that were uh, part of one of the the uh, astronomy clubs. That one's sticking on there despite heat and moisture. So, New Horizons also gives me a date for when this was actually bought. And, uh, like they, they show, their bellows are replaceable, so when it really does catch on fire, I'll be able to do that. And the thing that, uh, Man Lake, uh, my first order of Man Lake was a, um, the suit with the uh, veil, and uh, it's quite a sturdy little suit for seven, uh, 60, 70 bucks. The, uh, the the flat veil. I don't know if there's a better name for it, and uh, a cotton canvas kind of and uh, loops at the fingers. It's uh, stood up to me using it also as a uh, landscaping jacket for going into uh, sa sago palms. So it's uh, been very handy so far, even in my sideline work as a landscaper. And the other thing I needed was a, a cheap pair of pants, because I was going cheap. And uh, I've had people comment, where did you get your pants? And uh, these are Walmart uh, scrubs in the scrub section, the clothing, women's clothing, 
And uh, I made them extra large because uh, I pulled an extra, yeah, the extra large. And I, uh, I stitched it down to a smaller waist size because I'm putting these over shorts. When I go down, was going down to uh, Tampa Bay's Association's yard. Oh man, you wouldn't believe how hot it was down there. So these would go over shorts. I'd wear them for a little while and could take them right off again. So that's that's my mostly my basic B B clothing when I go. And I probably overdress for some of the experts that we meet now are uh, doing it with a with little less, but I, I certainly enjoy since I still don't know if I'm allergic. I enjoy that. I also picked up a cheap pair of boots at the uh, Walmart because uh, the yard down in Tampa was also very uh, saturated. It was down on the bay, so the moment it rained, they said, uh, bring good boots, and those are some cheap, cheap boots with uh, toes. And I also picked up, like I say, these are Man Lake. Uh, has a basic glove, and I'm stuck for whether this is the cowhide version or the, the lambskin. I'll, I'd have to check, and I'll put in the comments underneath if it's a, what order number. The medium, um, uh, it works okay. I don't know if I'd fit a small. The smalls are... And uh, like I say, once you get past the fear of being next to bees, a lot of people take them off. Because you you have no feeling through these. And you're just uh, smushing bees if you're not in the mood to be very careful. So that, that was my basic bee suit collection right there. And uh, a couple of other things I ordered to get me started. Okay was uh, hive tools, of course. This say get a hive tool. This one's a little bit unusual. Uh, I get comments about, you know, where'd you get this one? So it's a man lake. The frame lifter isn't the I'll bring out the other one for comparison. Isn't the uh, the hook. So now I've got a collection of each style. This has a, a bracing part. Um, to brace on the top of the frame, and this is supposed to go under the lip, and it's flat, so it has a lot of contact. It's got the nail puller and the flat. Um, and I lent this to a girl that was at the one of the extraction meetings that we went to, so here's the new one. And this one's so unique, I don't put my name on it. I just, I just know that's mine. And the uh, other thing that was on sale, Man Lake, back in the last year, 2015, was their pink tool for uh, breast cancer awareness. So, you know, I went, yay, breast cancer awareness. So, and this one's your Man Lake HD 578 painted tool. Um, doesn't have a rest, just has the, the uh, longer, a little longer lip. And uh, these are quite messed up with propolis, and I keep throwing them back in the fire. So the fire doesn't burn the paint necessarily. It, it darkens it. It doesn't, hasn't burned it off yet. But these also aren't very clean right now, so everybody's talking about not transferring stuff between hives. So this has a little sharper. These are sharp tools. And like I said, this came from Brushy Mountain. Some of them I've seen, these have been painted red. Um, I think the manufacturer probably does specials for each of their people. That they want to sell to, and uh, it's a nice size. I don't know, women might like this size. This one's a little lighter, and this was just to see if I could get something that clean propolis. And let's see, the other thing that I bought this month, I forgot to mention earlier, was the fire starting uh, pellets. I'm uh, I like fire, but I couldn't keep it keep these burning. These, if you use them straight, you light them and blow them out, they will be uh, a smoking. They'll create their smoke for about 15 minutes, or you leave them lit and you throw them in the bottom, 
and start stuffing your other material on top and they will keep the fire going until it actually catches and you can stamp it down and make it a smolder uh, of a uh, fire. And uh, that's still an art in some cases. I also, my mom was messing around the house again and uh, she started picking up pine straw and bagging it so I grabbed a bag of pine straw and I put it in this uh, uh, bucket with and this was going to be a bucket that I was going to make a, a seedling starter out of so you got to forgive the uh, the holes in it for pots but that's a whole other video that I should have made <laughs> and uh I don't know, other, other things that I've taken along with, just in case, um, this is another bag of clippings, uh, and you got, uh, clippers, in case you gotta snip stuff, I've seen people snip, uh, branches when they're catching swarms, so I figured I'd put all of my stuff in the car, and different types of gloves, although I'm told black is not a good color to to use, even though I was thinking about that. Orange ones, haven't got to try it. These are a little thinner. You might be able to feel more through these, but uh, they aren't tough on the back. So any bee that lands here will probably sting you if you if they smell the pheromones. And uh, some of my other landscaping gloves, I just got to use. These have a little thicker nubby texture. They're great for some of those uh, sago palms. We just used them yesterday for sago palm cleanup at my client. And uh, I'll have to show you the other part of that out front when I go back out front. But these catch a lot of schmutz. So, schmutz is a word. Uh, and my clippers, long clippers, hedge clippers, mini clippers, a rake. Uh, I don't know, maybe I could scoop something with those. But this is my setup in my car. I have figured it's easier to keep it in the car because I'll be immediately on. If anybody's ever going to call me, I'll be ready to go. <laughs> so there you have it. The, uh, the startup bare minimum bee kit that you probably would want to consider for yourself just to have a startup kit so but uh, that's my quick review of yesterday with my client and my B B tools that you need to start off with to at least visit the uh, the club yards with uh, a B smoker a jacket or a veil and a shirt with long sleeves uh, long pants that won't make you so hot you're gonna die. Um, a hat is good. Uh, a magnifying glass sometimes is helpful. I didn't remember to take that my last trip and everybody talks about the uh, the eggs on the bottom of the, the uh, cells and they'd say look here look here you'll see these eggs. Well if you're like me over 40 you're gonna need your readers or a uh, something flat like those credit card uh, magnifying glasses, uh, magnifying uh, Fres Fresnel lens. Um, handy, because those little tiny eggs are, are tiny and they're white. White on beige, white on beeswax beige is hard. Uh, that's why a lot of people buy the black frames, because you can see them better at the bottom. And uh, or, or old comb. Uh, if somebody's got comb that's been in the hive a long time, it'll turn brown and you can see them a little better. But magnifying glass, hive tools, uh, smoker fuel, queen catcher if you're doing uh, replacement queens, uh, which I've seen a couple times now, uh, especially in Florida where they reclean every year to keep the uh, possibility of being Africanized cut in, you know, half or whatever. If, if there aren't some genes of of uh, Africanized bees up north by now, you know, that, that's that's just uh, wishful thinking. So hot in the sun, dang. 
You know, the screen is not doing a good job. Showing me my yard. Ah! A power, power shot 150IS with the Op Tech USA lanyard system. And if I I'll always have, I think, a, a, a sling lanyard because I'll, I'll drop it. I'll drop a camera in a heartbeat. And I don't want to do that with the camera. I don't want to do that with the phone. And this puts it like a lot of professionals use their SLRs at the right at the hip. Got one more piece of B gear that I should have mentioned before. This is the shoulder pod. Camera, uh, camera phone grip. And uh, you have to look for the one made, made uh, by your, for your phone, but on the end is a weight that turns into the grip and a lanyard, which uh, goes onto the grip. And the weight is to counterbalance the phone, but on the end is a uh, tripod mount screw uh, fitting. And you ratchet the part around your phone, and once it's in place, you, you hold it, and you have your thumb free to mash on the camera options on your Android phone, and the weight goes under your under your finger. So, it's all a part of the clever B gear that everybody seems to buy. Everybody looks for a way to put their their phone up to to uh, film themselves doing the bees. So, that was what I was doing the other day on my unboxing. And about the only uh, out of the box thing you don't have that's that they should put on it is a uh, I used a wooden bead, but uh, maybe one of the uh, cinching uh, plastic uh, uh, holders, uh, I'm not going to remember the right word for it, a little carabiner thing, those might work too, but something needs to snug it up around your wrist. But the rest of the time, I'm going to put my other camera to use and I'll film myself with it in place. The shoulder pod. Uh camera grip in place on my phone and the lanyard around my lit wrist so that I don't drop it anywhere and like I say they they made it so that it weights it on the bottom gives you some fairly handy uh, grips I'm probably for a man it, it's questionable it's, it's a little large for me as a small-handed lady but uh, you then have the ability to mash on your buttons while holding it with your last two fingers underneath and uh, one up the back to steady you. And I can hold two cameras at once. I must be like, can I become a camera person now that I can hold two cameras at once and film myself? <laughs> I don't know. So that's a shoulder pod. I got it through Amazon uh, for a Christmas gift. And uh, that's an LG, L, LG G4 with a case on it. So it even holds it with with a uh, a case. And uh, a little awkward for running around um, trying to hold it if you're running around with it. But if you're filming with it, you unlatch the the weight and stick it on a tripod and it's steady as steady as all the tripod is so uh, last last piece of YouTube beekeeper gear that you need to uh, photograph yourself <laughs> well it looks like my LG was melting down while I was filming that stuff so I'm back on the Canon for a little bit and this is a comparison 
uh, for of all the things that you could have happen in the bee yard, I'd rather not have my camera melting down. So definitely the uh, the umbrella idea is a great idea. So and uh, just wanted to wrap up. I, don't, I can't think of anything more that I would have put on my bee list. Uh, trying to think. Other things, uh, yeah, there is something that's still on my bee list, uh, frame rest, where uh, you can hook it onto the side of the hive and then place the frames in the shade on the shaded side of the hide when you pull out your first frames, or if you pull out two to allow yourself some space. Um, that's still on my list. Um, seeing I don't have a lot of hives, I couldn't really justify 23 to $25 for just that frame rest. when. Part of the option that you're also looking for is uh, when you're setting up is uh, frame stands. And some people have been building their frame stands that when you take the frame out, the spot between the 2x4s or 1x3s is the same as the size of the hive frame rest, so that you can drop the frames uh, between hives. If you've got uh, the space between two hives, you can drop them. And if the spacing's right between the boards, they drop right in and, and are supported without falling through. So there's that's two things on the list that, that I'm not quite sure. The frame rest or build frames, frame stands, which uh, I've been looking through Home Depot a bit and trying to figure out um, things to make them out of that aren't uh, gonna break the bank kind of thing and haven't discovered that yet. I don't know that bees like to be on the ground. Everybody puts their stuff on stands to put it at waist high and, and easy, uh, I want to say easy to, to work at right at countertop height. So that's the, the thing you do in the yard. So just the last two thoughts about that. I'm, tr I'm racking my brain again for other things. Besides what I mentioned, uh, better gloves, uh, better clothing, uh, things like uh, the, the, the last of the list that I can think of for a beginner would be a, a queen muff. Queen marking supplies. Um, it's easy to find the pens. It's more the uh, the more more uh, elaborate cages or catchers, uh, the little plunger thing that some people make out of uh, prescription bottles to mark their queens, uh, or you can buy the ready-made ones. Those are again another six to seven dollars you'd be spending on that. Um, I want to say you can get started really uh, easily for around ninety dollars for the jacket tool, uh, hive tools, and uh, maybe you're into the 112 in uh, 2015 money. I think I spent 112 when I started out to get a, a reasonable jacket, and uh, the incidentals start adding up, the boots, the, the, the pants, so you're into the 100, 112, and uh, all right, if you're ready to spend that kind of money, then you then you're ready. I don't know, maybe it's a fool's errand. I, I really don't know. I keep a lot of hobbies in play. And uh, some people get started for less. Some some people want to go all out. And I kind of tried to pick the middle road. But you saw my basic gear. Uh -huh.